Black Panther is one of the many villains in this film. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, we've been talking about it earlier. It's, it's been quite a long edit process for this film. Yeah. Um, is it weird now seeing Black Panther, the movie, come out and sort of... Yeah, I never really thought about it before, but, yeah, I guess that's <laughs> the name of the character. I actually had a... Uh, uh, we actually were going to shoot a scene with a panther in the film, and, and then uh, we ran out of time. I was going to have the... When uh, Sanchez is just sitting in the waiting room, this panther just walked through the living room, and he he just sees it, and it never, uh, I never actually got to do it. But. So when was the movie actually shot? A year and a half ago. Okay. Yeah. And when did you first encounter the script? What was that like? Uh, my wife read it first, and she said, "I think you should read this." She was, I remember, she was laughing to herself, and, and I was like, "What are you reading?" She's like, "I think you'll like this one. You should read it." And, yeah, I just remember reading it and really liking the core idea in it. I think the the tone wasn't exactly what I was looking for at the time, and uh, so I ended up you know developing it and changing the tone of it to something that I wanted to make. And uh, but I really responded to the unpredictable nature of the script and uh, the twists and turns in it. And you know, I I like going to the cinema and being surprised. You know. How difficult is it to uh, get a film, an original film like this, off the ground? It's tricky, you know, like you, um, you know, there's no lightsabers or superheroes in this movie, so, um, you know, it's always a, a, a bit of a fight to get something original and, and different made, but, you know, I, I was determined and I found the right cast to, to do it with. Can you explain a bit about how Charlize Theron's production company got involved in yeah, well, Charlie's had seen a short film that I'd made called Spider and reached out to me and wanted to meet. And this was years ago and we met and we really clicked and got on well and became friends. And, you know, we'd been looking for something that felt right for us to do together. And when I found this, you know, I started, when I was developing it, I, I shifted the character of Elaine to something I thought would be great for her to play. And then when I thought it was ready, I, I sent it to her. And uh, she responded really well and wanted to come on involved as that character and as a producer. And, you know, and she's been a great supporter of, of me as a filmmaker and it just felt like a great fit for us to do together. Your brother, Joel, was in the film. Uh, yeah. Did you enjoy making him play a douchebag? An yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. Well, because it, it couldn't be further from him as a person in real life. So it was really fun to make him be that despicable. Uh -huh. um, what was it like directing him as well compared to the other members of the cast? Is uh, it different? Or? Yeah, look, it's it's easy. We have a very good shorthand. I think we have a very similar sense of humour and it's just fun for us to, to play together. So you've got a big stunt background. Yeah. How, what, how did you bring that to the film? Did you get involved in the stunts themselves? Like, Yeah, you know, the stunt coordinator was a guy, uh, Tony Lynch, who I started out doing stunts with. You know, we've done many stunts together and and work together so many times and you know if I if I have action in a film I'm definitely like to be quite involved in how it's set up and how uh, how it's shot we've got Paris Jackson in the film yeah how did she get involved um, Carmen who cast the movie suggested her as someone to audition for the film I saw her audition I loved her audition we met I thought she was the right person to play that character and and I thought she did a great job. Yeah, she's kind of unrecognisable and she's only in it for a few minutes, but um, she's great. Like, yeah, yeah. what was it like to work with her? She was great. She was, you know, she was, she came really prepared. She took direction. Uh, you know, all the things I crave from a, from an actor, you know, like they, they bring something to the character and, uh, you know, ultimately that's all I can ask, you know. There's lots of analogies about large animals in the script. Oh yeah. Was that uh, were any of them like improvised or like were they? No, a lot of that was uh, you know we scripted those into the. And was that with your your influence or? Uh, yeah, I think one of the writers had started putting that in, and I really enjoyed those elements to the script. Okay, what about the Black Panther, the villain's uh, obsession with the Beatles? Yeah, that was something we yeah, we developed into the script at some point, and I just really liked... Uh, look, I love the Beatles myself, and I just liked this idea that this guy was obsessed with the Beatles. It was like his uh, judge of character. You've also got um, David Iolo, uh rapping along to Will Smith yeah, at yeah. the start of the film. Like, how, what, what other bits of the music and the soundtrack did you... Look, uh, David, you know, rapping to Will Smith was, was an idea I had later on. 
uh, you know, I've always loved that song, and you know, and then the idea of David doing it in his Nigerian accent just really appealed to me. How far is this film for you a morality tale, and how far is it kind of because it's built as an action comedy? So yeah, um, is it does it have a moral message as well? I think so. Yeah, look, I think all of my films have an element of moral tale to them, and you know, I definitely respond to you know uh, the theme of karma and what goes around comes around and you do good things, good things come back to you. And so I, I you know, I think there's definitely a, a lot of that in the movie. How important was Amazon to getting this film made? Oh, extremely important though. You know, they basically let me make the film I wanted to make and really supported me in making that movie. And as, you know, as things adjusted, you know, like, as I said, David wasn't written as a Nigerian, Harold wasn't written as a Nigerian immigrant. And, you know, and as that idea came from David uh, during pre-production, they supported those shifts and, and changes to the script. And, uh, you know, I don't think I could have made that movie without them. Do you think you'd make more movies with them? Totally, yeah. In the future? What are you working on now? Uh, I've just finished a, a TV series in Australia called Mr. In Between. Uh, it's like a six episode um, series about a hitman uh, so I literally finished that a few weeks ago and now I'm uh, you know, promoting this and I've got a few other things I'm developing and do you think there's space for Gringo 2? Uh, I don't know let's see how the audience responds to the movie what would you I don't know I look yo know, I think sequels uh, like they they have to like belong in the world of that movie and do they you know does it take an idea another step further and if it felt like the right thing you know i'm i'm not one to rule anything out but it just has to feel right i guess